All right, guys. All right. His purpose was to make one new man from the two, thus making peace. Jesus is the Prince of Peace, guys. Why is he the Prince of Peace? Because within every human host body is a war that's raging. There's a war between good and evil within every heart, every person that, that ends up here. Unless you're simply just the other race that's uh, here to destroy God's children. I'm going to show you today uh, just basics of understanding some concepts in the Bible that were they'll never show you in a church. If you go and you show it to them, they'll ask you to leave. They'll, they'll, they won't want to discuss it. This is what the Lord God, the Lord God taught me. The Lord God taught me to read the scriptures. I was taught by him, by the Holy Spirit. No one taught me the scriptures. The Lord God did. I didn't learn them in church. The Lord God himself taught me everything I know. He showed me all the imagery that I show you in all the videos, whether or not it's bombings on U.S. currency that are hidden, whether or not it's the Vatican being a snake, whether or not it's all these clothing lines, lurking class, broken promises, odd future wolf gang, kill them all. Those are clothing lines. I can tie everything I just said to the Bible, every clothing line. The Vatican being in the shape of a snake. I can take it to the to the Bible and show you the reason it's a snake. <clears throat> so the all the spiritual gifting that the Lord gave me was in in order to be a confirming witness to the Bible itself. So he allowed me to see something as simple as this. So I'm going to use this image just briefly to give you the idea of what a confirming witness is. So the spiritual gift he gave me is this gift of sight that is above and beyond anything I've ever seen anybody else in, in the, I've never seen anyone in any public domain with the ability. So let me show you this. Here is an image of a sheep. So I'll take that sheep and I'll just put it right here and I'll just start right up here at the top of the head of the sheep going down to the ear. This goes out to an ear. That goes out to an ear. This black right here, the fuzzy in the ear is coming down the face of the sheep. There's the eye of the sheep. There's the eye of the sheep coming down the cheek right here. There's the nostril. And there's the tongue sticking out of the mouth of the sheep. Now here's the here's the fur around the sheep right here. So you're looking at a straight on shot at the sheep, right at the sheep's face. And then this is the fur, just like a lot of sheep when they've had their faces sheared and they have this ball of fuzz around them, and then here's a rainbow. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how this is going to be a confirming witness to the Bible. This right here, I'll take this sheep and I'll put it right here and turn it upside down, and it's an image of the Virgin. You can see it's the Virgin. I purposely blocked out the features on her face a little bit, so you to make sure you would see the, the tongue of the sheep, but now I'll simply enlarge it. There's the eye, there's the eye, there's the nose, there's the mouth. And all the constituent parts of the virgin are just a cleverly disguised sheep. But it's upside down. So let me show you how the Bible is a confirming witness for this. Okay, so we'll go to Isaiah. And I'm going to give you the NIV and then I'll do the KJV, King James. And it says, woe unto those who go to great depths. Here we go. Woe unto those who go to great depths to hide their plans from the Lord, who do their work in darkness and they and think, who sees us? Who will know? So apparently there's something, somebody, woe to those who go to great depths to hide their plans from the Lord and their their works are in the darkness, and they say, who sees us, who will know? You turn things upside down as if the potter were thought to be like the clay. Okay, well, the Lord God's the potter, we're the clay. So they're, they're saying, you turn things upside down as if the potter were thought to be like the clay. 
Shall what is formed say to the one who formed it, You did not make me? Can the pot say to the potter, You know nothing? Okay, now, now watch this. I just showed you a sheep. Right here, it's a sheep with its tongue sticking out. And it's also an image of the virgin. Okay, let me show you one more, one more thing. Just very simple, very easy to see sheep. This is a hieroglyph of Akhenaten and Nefertiti right here. All I did was trace around it because, again, I have the ability to see these things very, very quickly, very easily. So I just, I'll take Nefertiti right here. I just went around her nose. I mean, went around her, the, the outline of her body on the hieroglyph. And now I'll go turn it upside down right here. And I'll show you. Wow, why is it a sheep with its tongue sticking out again? You can see the eye of the sheep very easily and the teardrop and the tongue sticking out. And now let's go to a pyramid in Guatemala right here. Here's a pyramid in Guatemala. Now, right under here, under this first level, under this little ledge right here, is this image right here. So I'm going to take this image right here. I've already gone around. I'm going to put it right here. So now you can see that that image is right there. And now I'm going to turn that image upside down and I'm going to show you a sheep. There's another sheep. So here's the sheep's eye. Here's the sheep's eye. There's its nostril, nostril, mouth. And it's got hair like, you know, it looks like a typical Mayan drawings. I've, I've seen a lot of South American art and it's very common. They have a very unique style. Anyway, so, and then I'm going to show you this image right here. Here's an image of what looks like an owl. It's like a devil. There's the eye right here. There's the eye. There's the nose. There's the mouth. Look right here. It's like a curly Q horn, a curly Q horn over here. So it looks like a, like a human, like owl. And then let's let these just be the wings right here. Uh, so it looks kind of like the devil with wings or an owl with wings. It's also the male reproductive unit. Here's a penis right there's the head of the penis the shaft, the testicle on both sides. And then the whole thing becomes the female reproductive system as well. So I'll just take it and I'll simply slide that guy right on top of the face of the sheep, right there. Okay, so now I'm just going to stretch it out. And I already showed you the, you know, the devil, the owl. It's now like double and it's very obvious it's right on the it's right on the face of the sheep so the devil's been superimposed right right on the face of the sheep that's a hieroglyph from a pyramid in guatemala this is from a hieroglyph in egypt they both have the same thing well, it's got a sheep here this one's got a dead sheep here and that's all the same as the virgin a dead sheep here and here's the confirming witness so the Bible is going to be the confirming witness for this now. Let me go back to here. So we'll go to Isaiah. Woe unto them who go to great depths to hide their plants from the Lord. They do their works in darkness and they say, who sees us who will know? You turn things upside down. So who's turning things upside down? Well, I can tell you because of my years of experience in doing just what I showed you. It's always the devil, Satan, the serpent. It's this other race of beings every time. And it's always the female and male reproductive systems. It's always has to do with sex. Always. So what are the plans they're doing? Okay, so I want you to see this in a in a different in a different um a different Bible, uh, the KJV. So I'll do the KJV and I'll and then I'll go back to 29, 15, and 16. And then it says, Woe unto them who seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord. So they hide their plans from the Lord. And their works are in the dark. And they say, Who seeth us? Question mark. And who knoweth us? Question mark. Surely your turning of things upside down. So, Look what it's saying. Surely your turning of things upside down. 
shall be esteemed as, when you say esteemed as, that means regarded as, shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. Well, God's the potter, we're the clay. So when I turn things upside down to see what it really is, is it the virgin or is it a dead sheep? Well, interestingly enough, it's both. It's the virgin and a dead sheep. Is it a king? Is it a king wearing some crazy, stupid headdress? Because this is really what they're 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 billing it as. Like up under here, it's almost harder to see what it really is than what I've shown you. It is like right here. This is a king. This is a Mayan king. There's his eye. There's his eye. There's his nose. There's a, this is what they want you to see. If you look at this thing. It's this crazy Mayan king wearing some really whacked out headdress, which is really an upside down sheep and a devil. So the human face is right side up looking at you and the devil face is upside down. So they're stacked head to head. So you have one face looking right at you, eye, eye, mouth, and here's the devil, eye, eye, mouth. So they're set head to head, one up, one down. Okay, so, okay, so now. I'm going to show you, I'm going to teach you, and I'm going to show you what the Lord showed me and how he taught me. I was, I was truly taught by the Lord himself. Everything I've learned in the scriptures, everything that I've been able to show the world, uh, this hidden imagery, even the hidden architecture, the Vatican being a snake, all that stuff, is all a supernatural spiritual gift, as well as the understanding of the Bible that goes with it. So, all right, let's, first of all, let's give all the glory to the King. Let's look up. Jesus, thank you for what you did for me that I could get to do this. And I pray that it just falls on open hearts, open minds, open ears, open eyes. Amen. All right, let's do it. Y'all ready? Here we go. All right. So let's start with... Isaiah, uh, and let's talk about Satan. Uh, Satan is the accuser of the brother, brethren, and that's his name after being cast down. It was Lucifer. And after he was cast down, it's Satan, the accuser of the brethren. Okay, now watch this. Okay, let's, let's do this real quick. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Okay, so let's let me break this down for you. This is super, super, duper, duper, duper important that you know the difference between Lucifer and the cumulative sum of Lucifer's group of. I want to use the exact terminology. Um, group organized for war. That's what the word host means. Like Jesus in the Old Testament is Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts means a group organized for war. So for warfare, I'll show that to you in a minute. So anyway, so let's go and let's do Isaiah 14 and let's start getting everybody out in the open. Who are they? So let's look at this word real quick. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. Now I want to point out Jacob. Jacob and Esau were twins. He's, it says heel catcher. That is supplanter. I don't know if you guys know what a supplanter is. But I'm, I'm going to tell you. A supplanter is like someone that goes somewhere. And then they take over everything. That's a supplanter. You supplant everything. It's like, oh, I showed up, but hey, this is, I'm going to take over the whole thing. That's a supplanter. Okay, well, Jacob was one of two twins. There was Esau and Jacob. And so he was holding on to his brother's heel. Think of one right side up, one upside down. And it says heel catcher, right? Okay. 
So anyway, for thus saith the Lord, the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and yet will choose Israel. So let's look at the word Lord real quick. The word Lord right here, see right here, 3068 is from a Hebrew. Okay, it means to come to pass, to exist. Watch this, to exist. Okay, the word is Haya, H-A-Y-A-H. It's spelled the same forward as backwards, okay? So the Lord, the word Lord right here, 3068. I'm going to highlight this the same color. Okay, word number 3068, it's all capital, L-O-R-D. Now, you'll see the same word sometimes with the Lord God, and it'll the word God will all be capital letters, and it'll be 3069. That's the same thing, but it's just another way of expressing it in their language, and I'll show you that when we get to it. But watch this. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. Well, who's the Lord? Who? So if we're talking about the Lord will have mercy, we know that that's the king. If he's going to have mercy on you, he is the one that runs the show because he's going to have mercy on you. Okay. Isn't it fascinating that the Hebrew word is 1961? That's an inversion of itself. If you flip over, oh, if you turn upside down and backwards, a one nine, it's a six one. Okay, so that's the this is gonna boggle your minds, people. Okay, so and the word for thirty the Lord six thirty sixty eight is Yehovah, Jehovah, Yehovah, the self existent eternal Jehovah. Now I want to show you this right here. See thirty sixty nine. That's Yehovi. It's you. It's the same thing as Jehovah, but it's used. You use you. You say it like this, Yehovi, because when you use this this word in front of it, used after one thirty six, pronounced by the Jews. So so if you use this, that 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 word is Adonai, which means Lord. So if you say the Lord and you're going to say it in their language, it's Adonai Yehovah. But when you're referring just to the Lord God himself, just use it without, you know, it's all capital. One word is Jehovah, Jehovah God. There it is. Okay, so I want you to, I wanted you to see that. And then I'm going to show you who that becomes in the New Testament or the New Testament bears witness to it. Okay. I'm sorry, here we go. Back to Esword. Ready? Here we go. Isaiah 14. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which did weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend to rise, ascend. Into heaven, I will exalt my throne. And we'll talk about that word later. It's I did a video on it. It's mind boggling. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Look right here. So you see the word God right here? Well, we just saw right here the Lord. That's a self-existent eternal Jehovah. I'm going to tell you right now who it is. That's Jesus in the Old Testament. It's the it's you're it's going to be the Lord God Almighty, the Almighty God that's over and above everything. In the system we're in called the earth, the word Lord, like right there, Jehovah, is the self existent eternal Jehovah Elohim. Now watch. Just pay attention. So here we go. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? You said in your heart, I will ascend above into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Let's click on this word, God. So this is who is going to be taken over by Lucifer. No matter what anybody tells you, you're reading it right here. I will exalt my throne above the stars of 
God. See that word God? Look at that. 410. Mighty, especially the Almighty. So the name for the Almighty God that's above, that's above the system you call the earth, the one that's above and over everything is L. E L. There it is. Hebrew word 410. And so Lucifer said he's going to ex exalt his throne above the stars of El, the, the Most High God. Hebrew word 410. The word stars means as round or shining, figuratively a prince. It's the princes of the Most High. And I can, well, I'll be showing you uh, confirming witnesses of that's exactly what it is. I did in the video the other day where I showed you the, the word. I did a whole video on the, the word throne. It is mind boggling because of the confirming witness that's in the Vatican. So it, it literally shows exa exactly the scripture in the Vatican where Lucifer is trying to exalt his throne above the stars of God. Okay, so now, in this one scripture, I showed you the word Lord. The Lord will have mercy, the self-existing eternal Jehovah. And Lucifer will try and exalt his throne above the stars of El, the Almighty God, the Lord God Almighty, okay? Now, I just want to show you one more thing that from 352... So you understand it, it means a chief politically, also a ram, which is a sheep from its strength. So though L is a chief politically, like he's the head, you know, like the president, he's the head of all the gods. He's the chief politically of all the gods. Okay, that's it. Now watch. Here we go. Okay, so now I want to show you Ezekiel 28 so we can compare and contrast and I can show you exactly who's who, who's God, who's who, El, the Almighty God, the Lord God, the self-existent eternal Jehovah, and then who's uh, Elohim, who is Elohim's going to come into play here. So I want to show you that right now. So the word of the Lord came again to me saying, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus. Now, this is really a very cryptic thing. The prince of Tyrus is really, is really a physical representation of Lucifer in the flesh. Now, watch. Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, Thus saith the Lord God, Because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a God, I sit in the seat of God in the midst of the seas, yet thou art a man, not God. Though thy set thine heart as the heart of God. Now watch. This is so important right here that people see this. Ezekiel 28. The word of the Lord came again unto me again. What's the word, Lord? The self existent eternal Jehovah 1 9. Invert that. You get a 6 1 1 9 6 1. The self-existent eternal Jehovah. Thus saith the Lord, the self-existent eternal Jehovah. Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus. I want to show you this real quick, just so you see it. Prince, a commander as occupying the front, military or religious. Okay? Prince of Tyrus. Watch. A rock. A stone to cramp, that is confined, adversary to enclose, to bind up, to put in bags. Thus saith the Lord God, you know, say, the Lord says, to the prince of Tyrus, it means a prince, a commander of a rock or a troop. To cramp, to bind up. I want to give you a concept now. You're in a twin system. It's always going to be this. So the adversary, Prince of Tyrus, he is a commander and a ruler. And the word, uh, the word Tyrus 
means to cramp, to confine. Think of a set of twins. Adversary, to bind up, beset, besiege, enclose. Okay, now. Thus saith the Lord God. Now, remember I showed you just a minute ago. When you see the word Adonai, Adonai, Hebrew word 130, in front of the word God, it's Jehovah, but you say Yehovah because the word Adonai is in front of it. So it's Adonai Yehovah. But, but see, Yehovah, Yehovah right here, see right here, is the same as the self-existent eternal Jehovah. See right here? So it's just the way it's written in their language. So when you see Adonai in front of the word God, and it's all capital, it's Adonai Yehovah, as that's how you say it. Okay, so now, Son of Man, say to the Prince of Tyrus, Thus saith the Lord God, Because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a... Everybody look at... I'm color-coding things right here. I am a God. Look at the word God. Hebrew word 410, L. What's L? It's the Almighty God. The Lord God Almighty. It's especially the Almighty God. Hebrew word 410. Because thou hast said, I am the Almighty, I sit in the seat of, well, that's not the Almighty, Elohim. See, so this is the, this is the challenger, the, uh, this is the opponent of the Lord God. It says, Be, you have said you're the Almighty. You have said your heart is the heart of Elohim. That's all the gods. You have said your heart is the heart of Elohim. Let's see, I sit in the seat of Elohim in the midst of the sea, yet thou art not, thou art a man, because he's been cast down now. Thou art a man, not the Almighty. Thou set thine heart as the heart of Elohim. See, this is not the same word God, Hebrew 4.10, as this word God. And this word God is not the same as this word God the self-existent eternal Jehovah. So while you're reading this, if you're just reading the word God, you have absolutely no clue whatsoever what's really going on because you can't even delineate what it even means really. So you're just reading it God. Well, I speak other languages. Let me tell you something. Other languages are very descriptive in the way they, you know, the, the, the way they delineate things even just using other parts of the sentence to do it. Right here, we're proving, the Lord is allowing me to prove to you. So I guess I'm like really in a painful situation with this chair thing. Anyway, right here, the Lord's allowing me to show you a huge difference in just two verses. The word of the Lord came on again to me, the self-existing eternal Jehovah. And he said to the prince of Tyrus, the commander of, you know, the commander of the one that's going to cramp you up, the formative hostile uh, adversary the, to the, the prince, the commander of the hostile adversaries that's going to bind you up. Okay, thus saith the Lord God, self-existent eternal Jehovah, because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am El, I sit in the seat of Elohim, which is the gods. And so let's look at the word Elohim. Elohim means, Elohim means gods, but specifically used in the plural thus, especially with the article of the supreme God. So Elohim right here, when, when he's talking about the Prince of Tyrus, who's talking to the, their commander, I sit in the seat of Elohim. He's like, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the head dude of Elohim. I sit in the seat of Elohim. But you're not El. That's what it's saying. You sit in the seat of Elohim, gods of the supreme God, in the midst of the seas, in the midst of the seas, means to roar a sea like think of humanity in the midst of the seas yet thou art a man because he's been cast down now thou art a man and not the almighty and not the almighty 
though thou set thine heart as the heart of Elohim. So the Lord God's saying, well, I know your plan is to, I know your plan is to arise above, ascend above the stars of God. I showed you in Isaiah and you're a commander and you've tried to say thou art the Almighty, but you're not the Almighty. You may sit in the seat of Elohim in the midst of the seas, yet thou art a man, because now he's been cast down as the Prince of Tyrus. And I'm not, thou art not the Almighty, though thou set thine heart as the heart of Elohim. Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel, and there is no secret that they can hide from thee. With thy wisdom and thine understanding, thou hast gotten thee riches, and thou hast gotten gold and silver into thy treasures. And by thy great wisdom and by thy traffic, see the word traffic? It means to trade or peddle as a merchant, a spice merchant. By the way, that is the that is the inspiration for the, the band, the Spice Girls. Go watch the Spice Girls, the two become one. They're hunters. They're hunting you. And by thy great wisdom and by thy traffic, thou hast increased thy riches, and thine heart is lifted up because of thy riches. Now watch. There thus saith the Lord God, Adonai Yehovah, because thou hast set thine heart as the heart of Elohim, behold, I will bring strangers upon thee, and the terrible of the nations, and they shall draw their swords against thee, and the beauty of thy wisdom, and shall defile thy brightness. Okay, so now it's another, it's another scripture where the Lord God is going up against Elohim. God's. Now, you got to think of things. Now it's time for a conceptual thing. The Lord God, the Lord God, the self-existent eternal Jehovah is one. Elohim is many in one. Okay. Now, if you have a planet that populates and you have a bunch of people and it's begun by Elohim. Elohim's in everybody. Well, then you have to inject into the system the Lord God and it and that, that those two mingle together. So you have two different seeds in one body, two different spirits in one host body system. This is going to make sense out of everything in Genesis 1, Genesis 2, Genesis 3, Genesis 4. You'll go, oh my God, Genesis all of a sudden makes sense. Because the, the churches lie to you and they tell you that Genesis 1 is, is the, so it's the Lord God that started man and woman. No, it's not. It's Elohim. It's not the Lord God that started Genesis 1. Not at all. It's Elohim. It's a fallen group. I'll prove it. Okay, so here we go. Now you know that right here in Ezekiel, the word of the Lord, the self-existent eternal Jehovah came to me saying, Son of man, say to the prince of Tyrus, the commander of the group that's going to cramp them because it's twin system. Thus saith the Lord, the self-existent eternal Jehovah, because thine heart is lifted up and thou hast said, I am the almighty. See? Thou said, I'm the Almighty. I sit in the seat of Elohim in the midst of the seas. Yet thou art a man, not the Almighty. Thou hast, though thou hast set thine heart as the heart of Elohim, because you are wiser than Daniel, there is no secret they can hide from thee. So see right there, when you read it correctly, it's easy to see what's going on. There's a play between uh, the Lord God, in this, which is Jesus in the system. Jesus in the system in the Old Testament is the Lord God. I'll prove it. Ready? Watch. So let's do this real quick. We'll come right back there. So bam, let's see, bam, bam. Let's see. Here we go. Okay, so it's talking to him. And so it is written, the first, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. Read it. Say it out loud. This is 1 Corinthians 15, 45. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. 
the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Well, the last Adam is Jesus because he's the one that make, is, makes us a quickening spirit. And the first man, Adam, was Christ's representative in the system, was made a living soul. Now watch. That's why it says he's the first and the last. Now let's go to Genesis 1. Watch this. We'll go to Genesis 1. And Elohim, Elohim said, let us make man in our image. See the word image? To shade a phantom that is an illusion, resemblance, hence a representative figure, especially an idol. Look at what's underlined, especially an idol, hence a representative figure. A representative figure, especially an idol. Let me ask you this. Does the Lord God make idols or hate idols? He hates idols. So why would why would the 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 Lord God Almighty, why would he make an idol? Because this is not him making it. Elohim said, see, it's not El, it's not the Almighty God. It's Elohim. Elohim, read it. God's of the supreme God. So Elohim said, hey, let's make a man in our image. Okay, but what's their image? What's the image of Elohim? It's to shade a phantom that is figuratively an illusion, a resemblance, hence a representative figure, especially an idol, a vain show. So Elohim said, hey, let's make a phantom image. Elohim said, hey, let's make man in our representative figure, especially an idol. Let's do that. So Elohim created man in his own, I'll say vain show, in his own idol form. Look, it says idol right here. So let's say it like it is. So Elohim created man in his own idol form. In the idol form of Elohim created he him. Male and female created he them. Okay, so now I told you I would show you Jesus in the Old Testament is the Lord God. Now watch. The Lord God, look, the, the Lord God, watch this. The self-existent eternal Jehovah, one nine, turn a one nine upside down, you get a six one. The self-existent eternal Jehovah formed man from the dust. It's a very different word. It's formed. It's as a potter. And then the word dust is actually clay. See it right there? So when you see the Lord God formed man, the, the word Lord God is like Jehovah, the self-existent eternal Jehovah, formed as a potter man from the clay. The word dust is clay. And here you go, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Now listen, the first time in scriptures that man has a living soul is not in Genesis 1. It's in Genesis 2. Because this is the first man, Adam, this one actually, this formation of man, the word for man is Adam, A-D-A-M as well, but I like to say it, Adam. And then the first man that got a proper name was Adam. And that's because he was formed by the Lord God. And that's Jesus. Now watch. So the Lord God formed man as a potter from the dust, from the, from the, from the clay. And he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. See it? Man became a living soul right there, right there. Okay, now down here, and the Lord God caused a deep sleep, ready? A trance, a deep sleep, to stun, to stupefy with sleep or with death. A deep sleep to fall, the word is no fall, cast down, cast out, to fall upon Adam. See the word, Hebrew word 121. Look at the color, it's, it's rust. It's Adam, it's capital A. See capital A, D-A-M? 
Okay, this is the first time in Scripture you ever see Hebrew word one to one. Every time you see the word man, you see the Hebrew right here. See the word man right here? I'll make it yellow. Watch this. See the word man? It's Adam. Uh, it says, see Adam, Adam. But look, it's Hebrew word 120. It, it also means man. It means man, but it's not the proper name man. Does that make sense? So if you have Hebrew word 120, it means man. But when you have Hebrew word 121, the word man has been capitalized and turned into a proper name. So now it's Adam, the first man. Now watch this. Let's go back to 1 Corinthians 15. So I want to show you 1 Corinthians 15, 45. So it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. Well, I just showed you the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. Here I just showed you his name is Adam. His name is Adam. Right here, the first time it's used in Genesis 2.21. And then right here, and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Bam. And breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Now watch. Who did that? Who breathed into his nostrils? The Lord God. The self-existent eternal Jehovah. So this is life being breathed into the system. This is the living soul being breathed into the system. That's that eternal essence being breathed into the system. Now watch. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 15, 45. 1 Corinthians 15. Let's go down to where I showed you. Okay. And so it is written, the first man, and the word here is anthropos, like, you know, anthropology, I'm sorry. Yeah, anthropos, like from anthropology. Okay, so it means a human being. So, so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. Well, I just showed you that's in Genesis 2, where the Lord God formed him. But watch this. Look at the word Adam. It's Greek word 76, but it's of Hebrew origin 121. Very important detail right there. Hebrew word 121. Adam, the first man of Jesus. Adam, the first man of Jesus. Man as his representative. So the first man that got a living soul in the system was Adam, the first man, Adam, Hebrew word 121, Adam, the first man of Jesus, man as his representative. Well, who was the man in Genesis 1? That was the serpent race. That was Elohim forming the trap, forming the serpent race. This was the trap. I can give all this to you. You can have host bodies. You can have sex. You can do all these things. Just come with me. Thou hast set thine heart is the heart of Elohim. Do you get it now? Thou hast, okay, I'm going back to Ezekiel now. Thou hast said, un, thou, hast said thou art El. Thou, seat, thou sittest in the seat of Elohim, but thou art not the Almighty. Thou art a man. Although, although thou hast set thine heart as the heart of Elohim. So Elohim, all these gods that are many in one, many in one group said, no, we want to do that. We want to do what he wants to do. We want to have sex and do all those things. That's, that, uh, that's called free will. Okay, so the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. We know that that doesn't happen until... The Lord God breathes into his. Okay, so watch this. So, and the last Adam, and the last Adam, man at, of Jesus as his representative, was made a quickening spirit. What's a quickening spirit? To revitalize, make alive again your current of error. Is it a superhuman angel demon or is it divine God, Christ, Holy Spirit? A quickening spirit. It's a spirit that changes you 
from a superhuman angel demon and you get converted to God, Christ, Holy Spirit. Okay, so now I've shown you that, and I've proved using the Bible very, very simply and perfectly. Now, I'm going to show you Jesus is the self-existent eternal Jehovah. Ready? Oh, hang on one sec. There we go. Okay, here we go. So, we'll go to John. We'll go to John chapter 3. And Jesus answered and said to him, Verily, verily, except a man be born again. Because, see, you have a, listen, because you have a superhuman angel demon inside of you. Superhuman angel demon. Right side up, side down. You have your own set of twins. Twins, just like Cain and Abel. Just like uh, Jacob and Esau. Okay, so you have a superhuman angel demon inside of you. So we've got to get your eyes to become single so you regain your sight. That's what getting converted does for you. You regain your sight. So we, you get converted, so you get turned up. Now watch. Jesus answered and said to him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see, see, properly to see or perceive the kingdom of God. Now look at the word Jesus. You ready? Ready? Here you go, guys. The name is Jesus. See, Jesus. That's how you say it. Jesus in Greek. It's of Hebrew origin 3091. Jesus, that is Yehoshua. So anyone that says you can't call him Jesus knows nothing at all. You know less than nothing. I hear people get dogmatic about the name, and I'm like, you know nothing. You can call him Jesus. You can call him Yehoshua. You can call him the, the Prince of Peace. Uh, there's a lot of names for Jesus in the Bible, by the way. So look, Jesus, but look at, the, look at the root of the word. It's from Hebrew. It's from 3068 and 3467 combined. Because the name Jesus is a, or, or Yehoshua is a combination between the self-existent eternal Jehovah and saves. Jehovah saved. Now watch. I'll click on it. Watch. The self-existent eternal Jehovah. Well, where are we? We're in John chapter 3, for goodness sakes. Jesus answered. Let's do it again. Jesus, watch. Who is Jesus? He is Yehoshua. Where does the name Yehoshua come from? It comes from Hebrew origin 3091. 3091 is a conjunction. That means two different words put together. It's Hebrew 3068 put together with Hebrew 3067. Hebrew 3068 means the self-existent eternal Jehovah. And Hebrew word 3467 means to be open, to be safe, to deliver. So the self-existent eternal Jehovah saves. That's who Jesus is. And so when you go back to Genesis 2, just like it said, um, you know, in 1 Corinthians, and the Lord God formed man. Here it is. Sorry. And the self-existent eternal Jehovah, which is Jesus, formed as a potter. See, it says as a potter. Man, Adam, from the clay. Now, y'all remember that Isaiah thing I showed you earlier a little while ago? Isaiah Surely things, surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. Where did we just see the potter's clay? Right here. The Lord God forming man, the one that's got a soul, the self-existent eternal Jehovah formed as a potter, his man that has a soul from the clay that's how you know you've been converted because when i turn the virgin upside down 
I'm, I'm regaining my sight. That's how you regain your sight. You turn the whole world upside down and you'll be like, why the hell is that the devil? Whenever you see artwork and there's a spot on the forehead, that's so it makes a mouth. They put tags on clothes. Look, let me show you something. Hang on one second. Let me just take this tag and center it in my face right there. This hat is called Neff, N-E-F-F. -F. Do you know why? They're, they're, they're mocking us. Nephilim. Nephilim. Neff means fall, nephal. Like the fallen ones. So if you look at my eyes and you look at this little tag, it's like a mouth. So just turn, turn it all upside down and it looks like those are my eyes and that's a mouth. That's why they put the tag there. Welcome to the real world. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Oh, you don't remember the picture of the devil I showed you head to head. So you got one head of Jonathan Cleck looking at you right here. But if you go like that and you let this be the mouth, you got another one. That's why they put the tag there with Neff. Neff. It means nephil, nephalim, nephal. Nephalim means the fallen ones. Now I'm going to prove all these parts. Now let's really get into it. Get ready to freak out. Okay, so let me show you Psalm 82. Psalm 82. Psalm 82. Now, Elohim... Elohim, God's, it's many in one. Remember, whenever you see it, capital G-O-D, by itself, it, well, capital, and it's Hebrew word 430, it's Elohim, see, Elohim. But it's many in one. And think of their boss. Elohim standeth in the congregation of the mighty, the almighty God. So it can't be the, all. he can't be the almighty He's in the congregation. So just think of that other race of beings within our host body. Let's see, I had a little power surge problem here. Here we go. So Elohim standeth in the congregation of the Almighty. He judgeth amongst the gods. So see, look, see the word 430 capital? It's Elohim, but it's many in one. Now watch. He judges amongst the Elohim. How long will you judge unjustly? Okay, now here's a little logic. The discourse is being directed at Elohim. It's being directed at Elohim. So let me ask you this. If it's being directed at Elohim, God standeth in the, Elohim standeth in, in the congre, congregation of the Almighty. He judgeth amongst the Elohim. How long will you judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? Oh, wait a minute. Well, the Lord God, I mean, Jesus, the, the God that creates everything, does he judge unjustly? And does he accept the persons of the wicked? Oh, I forgot my headset. Yep. So, again, right here. Elohim, look, Elohim standeth in the congregation of the Almighty. He judges amongst the Elohim. How long will you judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? Again, so does Jesus, who was before all, does he judge unjustly? Does he accept the persons of the wicked? No. No, he doesn't. No. So let me show you. So how long will you judge, ready, judge, to judge, that is to pronounce sen sentence, or to govern, see, to govern, to judge. How long will you judge, How to vindicate or to punish? How will you judge unjustly? Evil. Oh, wow. So you're so... So it, perverseness, oh wow, unjustly, unrighteously, unmorally. So how long will you judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked morally wrong? There it is. Like, I mean, 
There's just no way to argue with what I'm showing anyone. I know the pathetic, you know, people that have already stepped off the cliff, they can't help it. But this is perfection in data. How long will you judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? Defend the poor and the fallen. So now you're so now the next sentence right here is telling them what to do. Defend the poor and the fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and the needy. Deliver the poor and the needy. Rid them out of the hand of the wicked. And then look what it says. They know not. Neither will they understand. Let me ask you this. I mean, I like this. Right there. Who's they? They know not. Neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. I'll tell you, tell you who they is. All the ones that are upside down. They have no idea. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. I have said, ye are gods. Look, I have said. I'm going to change it to a different color. I want to make it a little lighter in color. Let's do light blue. I have said, ye are gods. Ready? You're Elohim. And look, some of you are all of you. This is for every every one of us that ends up here. Ye are gods. And all of you, all of you are children of the Most High. See it? El. El Yon. The Supreme Most High Uppermost. You, so you're all Elohim. So we're all Elohim. So Elohim can never be the Lord God ever because it says you are Elohim and you're all children of El. See? You're all, so... But you shall die like men. So here's your punishment. You're going to have a death sentence. You're, you're going to die like men, human beings. You're going to die like men and fall. Remember, what's my look? Nef. Na, na fall. Nephilim. Na fall. Cast down. Cast out. Die. Divide. So... You're all gods, and all of you are children of El, but you shall die like men, and you shall fall. You shall be cast down and cast out like one of the princes, a head person, a lord, master, prince, steward. And you shall fall like one of the princes. So who would that make us? The princes that fell. Now watch. Jesus himself, when he was surrounded by his own creation, who he was there to redeem, Jesus himself even called out his people and said, Don't, they're, they're gonna, they were going to stone Jesus. I'm going to show you. They were going to stone him. He's like, wait, guys, time. I'm going to give you the Jonathan Cleck paraphrase, which is like super cool. <laughs> they're like, okay, so Johnny, 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 um, paraphrase. So the Jews came up with stones. They're going to stone Jesus. Jesus is like, so, yo, what's up? <laughs> okay, maybe not. He's like, okay, so which good works are y'all going to stone me? And the Jews said, hey, we're not stoning thee for good work. We're going to stone you for blasphemy because you being a man, make yourself equal to God. And Jesus is like, what? Don't your own scriptures say you guys are gods? So, I just said I'm the son of God, so take it easy with the rocks, okay? Put down the rocks. Put the rock on the counter and step away. Okay, that's like a mixture of places I've been and things that have happened to me. <laughs> They're like, huh? Okay, so here it is. Now watch. It says right here in Psalm 82.6, I have said ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High, but you shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Now watch. Now I'm going to go to John. I'm going to I'm going to go to John because Jesus Jesus is going to quote this scripture when he's on the earth in the New Testament. He's going to quote this scripture. Watch. John chapter 10. Jesus is talking about his sheep. Sheep 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 sheep. 
1034. And the, so, so Jesus, now I, I want to read you at least two verses before I, I drop the bomb on you. I want you to look at this. Jesus, who's Jesus? Jesus is the self-existent eternal Jehovah. There it is. Says it right there. Self-existent eternal Jehovah. So here he is alive and well in the, you know, in the New Testament. The self-existent eternal Jehovah. Here he is. Now watch. Jesus answered them, many good works have I shown you from my father. For which of those works do you stone me? Because they're going to stone him. And the Jews answered him saying, for good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. Blasphemy means vilification. So blasphemy means to vilify or to speak evil. If you're committing blasphemy, you're speaking evil. So vilification, especially against God, evil speaking and railing. Okay, so we're not going to stone you for uh, good works. We're going to stone you for blasphemy. And because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. Okay, let me ask you a question. Was Jesus a man that was making himself God? No. He was the Lord God Almighty coming into the system that was created by Elohim to start. Coming into that very system to convict everyone that was guilty that's what he's doing here so he's doing he's redeeming those that get to go back and he's convicting everyone that doesn't take the free gift so if you don't take the free gift which is him dying for your sins even though you committed treason against him then your punishment is carried out and you get an eternal death sentence that's why i'm sitting here this late at night at 12.01 a.m. doing a scripture video because even though I know the end is imminent, I know how important this knowledge is of the word of God and I'm willing to stay up and do whatever I have to do so you guys can have it because the people that don't know this is I'd rather stay up late, get very little sleep and be in a lot of pain because I have some serious back issues going on these days. So anyway, I'd rather do that and know that I got to help you instead of just know that I know and have it die with me. So here, this is too important. Here we go. So John 10, 33. No, we're going to stone you because thou being a man makest thyself God. He wasn't a man that made himself God. He was the Lord God that made himself a man. They got it backwards. But y'all remember what it said? Y'all remember what it said in in um Psalm 82, don't you? What did it say in Psalm 82? Jesus in Psalm 82, what does it say? They know not, neither will they understand. Who won't understand? All the gods that have been cast down. Your gods. And you're going to die like men and you're going to be cast down. That's what he's saying right here. Look, I have said you're gods. You're all children of El, but you're going to die like men. You're going to fall. You're going to be cast. Look, look at the word fall to cast down, to cast out. You're going to be cast down like one of the princes, the rulers. Look what it says. At any rate, that, pay attention, had rule. See it? That had rule. Previously had rule. No longer. I have said you are gods, all of you are children of the Most High, but you're going to die like men, you're going to fall like one of the princes. So see, there are a bunch of gods that are in host bodies. Now watch. Let's go back to John 10. Back to John. John 10. Here it is. So they said, no, we're going to stone you because that thou makest, thou being a man, makest thyself God. Wrong. He was the Lord God that made himself a man. Jesus answered them and said, Is it not written in your law? Is it not written in your law? I have said ye are gods. Right there. I'm going to highlight that bright blue. I want you to see it. Watch this. So Jesus calls him out. He's like, no, 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 no. 
you can't stone me because is it not even is it not written in your law I'm gonna change this to uh is it not written in your law I have said ye are gods well yeah it is I just showed it to you <laughs> it's like he said it in Psalm 82 I have said you are gods well you know what the word gods is right Elohim you know what Elohim means gods of the supreme God angels another word for gods is angels gods equals angels angels equals magistrates magistrates equals princes they're all the same watch I'll prove it so here we go so let's go back to Psalm 82 oh here it is oh sorry Psalm 82 so we're gonna knock this out of the park I have said ye are gods ready look what does it say gods of the supreme God also by applied by way of deference to magistrates a magistrates a ruler it's like a judge and angels judges so gods are magistrates magistrates are angels angels are judges but you're gonna fall like men you're gonna be so y'all are the fallen angels ah that makes sense now the whole thing makes sense so why do you think he's telling him in John chapter 10 hey your own scriptures say your gods don't they so why do y'all think it's such a so so now I'm gonna do the Johnny click paraphrase whoa you guys can't stun me no 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 uh-uh your own scriptures say I have said you are gods right yes or no yes or no it does and you guys know the scriptures cannot be broken so if it says in Psalm 82 I've said you're Elohim then you're Elohim that's all there is to it you can't get out of it so watch here it is so Jesus so everybody read this yourself Jesus who's Jesus he's a self-existent eternal Jehovah there it is look Jesus the self-existent eternal Jehovah 1961 that's no accident that that number represents him one nine if you turn it upside down and backwards it's six one because he's in control of that whole system he says is it not written in your own in your law I have said sorry I want to get that part blue right there is it not written in your law I have said ye are gods of course it is we just did in Psalm 8 too and then look what Jesus says if he called them gods unto whom the word of God came comma and the scriptures cannot be broken semicolon say ye of him whom the father has sanctified and sent into the world thou blasphemous because I said I am the son of God so let me paraphrase that so Jesus is saying whoa wait a minute time out uh -uh. you guys can't tell me your own scriptures say that I said you are gods back in Psalm 82 so if the word of God came unto them that are called gods and the scriptures can't be broken guys you know the scriptures can't be be broken right what's the big deal so you say I'm blaspheming I'm speaking evil of God because I said I'm the son of God what that doesn't make any sense that's crazy it's crazy yeah, but neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. Oh, that's right. Those who try and hide their plans, they turn everything upside down. Even you, you got turned upside down in their world. Oh, that's why Genesis 1, it's not the Lord God that's making the system. It's Elohim making the system, turning everything upside down. That's why there's an Adidas commercial called the original where they're all hanging upside down to start the very commercial. Ah. All right, guys. Do you get it? And the scriptures cannot be broken. I have said ye are gods. So there it is. It's not arguable. Anyone that wants to argue with it is a lunatic. They're delusional. Or they're just uh, part of the demonic realm. 
that's all there. There's no other real choices, I don't think. Anyway, so I wanted to get you everybody started on the basic scriptures, uh, get you going right now. And uh, this is the trap. This is the trap that you couldn't see, but it really is. What looks really great, hey, we can do all this, is really this right here. This, what that everybody thought was going to be this super great thing. Let's see this. Uh, see, it's kind of funny. They have their little mirror reflection right side up, upside down. Is really this, the serpent race killing you. Neither shall you touch it lest you die. What does that mean, Click? What do you mean, neither shall you touch it lest you die? What do you think the forbidden fruit was? You think it was a peel, an apple? No, ready? Let me say. And now the serpent, and by the way, that's from its hiss because it hisses. The word is nakash. To hiss, that is whisper a magic spell. So the word serpent means to hiss, to whisper a magic spell. Okay. Now, the serpent was more subtle than any of the beasts of the field, which who made? The Lord God, self-existent, eternal Jehovah. Who made the serpent? The Lord God. And he said unto the woman, Yea, as God said, you shall not eat of the tree of the garden. And the woman said, look at the word woman, adulteress. There's other words for woman, by the way. They chose this one because it incorporates the first declination as adulteress. The, so the serpent said to the adulteress, did the Lord say you can't eat from any of the trees in the garden? The woman said to the serpent. Um, so here's another question. Um, you know, I use, I've caught a lot of snakes in my life. I used to go catch snakes. It was like a thing, you know, kind of like a crocodile hunter. I used to take my kids, teach them how to identify poisonous snakes, non-poisonous. And we used to round, you know, do our little snake roundup. It was a, it was a lot of fun. Anyway, but uh, so uh, I've never... Not one time, and I've caught a lot of snakes. I've never had one that talked to me. I mean, I've dated a few. <laughs> okay, more than a few. <laughs> but no, when I'm actually catching snakes, they never talk. They never talk. I've been bit. That was kind of creepy and scary. Even though it was a non-venomous snake, it was still like, it bit me three times so fast. So I was like, I'm pretty sure it's non-venomous. <laughs> anyway, so check it out. So anyway, the point I'm trying to make is snakes don't talk, okay? There's no snake that sits up and starts, you know, having a little convo. Hey, you're going to try out the you gonna try out the fruit? Check it out. It's good. Uh, no, snakes don't talk. They don't sit up and talk. So the serpent said unto the woman, the Nakash, it's a race of beans. The serpent said unto the woman, and the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, the midst, a bisection. Think of right side up, upside down with a dot in the middle. Think of a circle with a dot in the middle with a line going down it. Uh, and then another line halfway. Make an X. Oh, that'd be good. Make a circle and then make an X with a dot in the middle. And that, so anyway... But the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God said, you shall not eat it, neither shall you touch it. What's that say right there? To lie with a woman, lest ye die. To die, literally or figuratively, causedly to kill, to be put to death. So neither shall you touch it, to lie with a woman. So, what do you think got everybody killed? Just, why do you think they worship the virgin? You know, the whole Catholic Church. You know, the big snake that everybody meets in to, to sing to Lucifer dawning his own creation, which is true. Yes, it's true. Lucifer dawning his own creation. Welcome to the earth. Oh, that's the big gnarly secret they don't want you to know. Yeah, because the Lord God doesn't make idols, does he? No, no. No, he doesn't. He doesn't make up, but Elohim does. Elohim created male and female right there in Genesis 1. Okay, now you got the basics. Now. So now I'm going to just take off on a rampage. Okay, so now, now that I've shown you that, 
Now, get ready for the whole world. Ready for the Bible just to come alive? You ready for the Word of God just to explode onto the scene? You ready to freak out and see some of the coolest, craziest, most mind-bending stories you could ever even imagine? They're not stories. They're testimonies. There's a huge difference. A testimony is like in a court of law where you stamp your, that's it, signed, sealed, delivered. Mm, I get to share these with you. Anyway, okay, I wanted to get you started. We'll keep it in an hour. I could go on for about six to eight more hours right now. It's already 1214. I'm going to wrap this one up. This is video number one, who is God? Who is Jesus? Who is Jesus? He's a self-existent eternal Jehovah that formed as a potter forms clay in Genesis 2. And he breathed into man the breath of life and man became a living soul. Jesus is the self-existent eternal Jehovah mentioned in Genesis 2. I proved it using the scriptures. So it's, it's impossible to go against this. By the way, it makes sense of everything. It'll be like, I understand the Bible. See, the church has lied to every. Oh, that's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in Genesis 1. Balderdash. That's bullshit. That's just a nice way of saying it. Ball, I like saying balderdash. Balderdash. <laughs> it's total bullshit. No, it's not. It is not the Lord. It is not the Lord God in Genesis 1. You know how I know? The word Lord is not in front of God. That's out. Okay. All right. I love you guys. Anyway, there it is. Uh, introduction to super understanding of the Bible and what's really going on. There's no way you could read Ezekiel 28 and, and even understand what's going on without knowing the difference between God, God, the Lord God, self-existing eternal Jehovah, Elohim, uh, Elohim, um, uh, El, the almighty God. You can't, you can't do it. You gotta, you gotta know who's who. That's what the church has got everybody confused with. All right. I love you guys. And we're just going to take off like a rocket ship now. Okay.